my gosh, it's changing lanes on its own. That is wild. With the Obama administration recently setting aside $4 billion to develop self-driving cars in the next 10 years, it won't be long before you can kick back and let your car do all the work for you. You do not do nothing. It knows when it needs to stop. It knows when it needs to go. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. Today, we're counting down the five most interesting facts about self-driving cars and the impact they will have on society. Okay, first of all, we need a better name for the concept than self-driving or semi-autonomous cars. Robomobiles? Auto-autos? Mm, driverless carriages? We'll try some out. You get a self-driving car! You get a self-driving car! You get a self-driving car! Number five, new cars need new rules. Lawyers always get in the way. They do. Around the world, countries are writing new laws to regulate self-driving cars. The UK says anyone operating a self-driving car has to be able to take over in case anything goes haywire. Break! Break! Similarly, among California's proposed laws, the Department of Motor Vehicles has mandated that all self-driving cars must have steering wheels and a licensed driver behind the wheel, something Google has objected to because they don't want their cars to have steering wheels or pedals. Japan wants to have a system in use for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, but they haven't yet figured out the regulatory framework. Not only will governments have to adjust to this new technology, but so will insurance companies. Many analysts are predicting a Napster moment in the insurance industry because they believe self-driving cars will lead not only to fewer accidents, but to fewer people owning cars, and therefore, fewer people having to purchase car insurance. I will look at the bright side. I just saved a bunch of money on my car insurance. Number four. Self-driving cars call for new virtual maps. Just as media formats and game consoles become obsolete with the advent of new technologies, so too do virtual maps. It'll take more than Google Street View for a self-driving car to navigate cities. They will need built-in, high-definition 3D maps which recreate roads down to the centimeter. To map out an area, companies have sent out cars with LiDAR-based cameras, which project lasers collecting 700,000 points of data each second and capture everything from a 360 degree perspective. You see the car, you see the, the environment of the car. These maps tell the self-driving car where all the landmarks are, from traffic signs to street lamps. It's up to the car's sensors to identify all of the moving objects, such as cyclists or other cars. Number three, privacy will be an issue. Think they're watching us? Oh yeah. The very nature of self-driving cars mean that they are constantly watching what is happening around them and who is riding in them. Advocacy groups such as Consumer Watchdog are concerned about what kind of information self-driving cars will collect on their passengers, including where they travel, where they live, and who they're with. A group of 12 car manufacturers signed a written pledge promising to be open about what information they collect from customers and limit the amount of time they keep the information. But when California passed its self-driving car legislation, Google successfully lobbied to take out all of the proposed privacy protections. Then who are they going to sell it to? How valuable is this? And how dare they, one might ask. That's right. Google's whole autonomous car initiative might just be a way for it to collect even more personal information about us. What do I have to do to get a little privacy? Ah! Number two. Google's self-driving cars are safe, maybe too safe. As any experienced driver will tell you, sometimes being aggressive or breaking the rules a little bit is exactly what a situation calls for. Google's self-driving cars are designed to obey all traffic laws, but that doesn't mean they always get it right. And if anything, they're kind of more courteous and more defensive drivers than, than normal drivers. In Mountain View, California, one of the cars was pulled over for going 24 miles per hour in a minimum 35 miles per hour zone. There have been a couple of instances where the cars have overreacted to situations they didn't prepare for. In one case, the car swerved erratically so as not to hit a car parked a little too far from the curb. Another time, a self-driving car moved quickly to the right, anticipating a crash with the car in a different lane, when all that car was doing was going slightly over the speed limit. Sharing the road with these model citizens will probably take humans a little getting used to. In my road, red liver lips. Number one, self-driving cars might have to make ethical decisions involving life and death. That's a tough choice. At this current stage, self-driving car sensors are stymied by bad weather conditions and small objects such as tumbleweeds. But on the road, they will have to be equipped to make life and death snap decisions. For instance, is it better to sacrifice the passenger inside the car to avoid killing a family of five? Or to kill the family of five to preserve the life of the passenger? 
Philosophers call this the trolley problem, a hypothetical scenario where someone controlling the switch to a track has to decide whether to let the trolley hit five innocent people or move the track and intentionally kill one person. If the snap decision were left up to a human driver, he could act quickly without being burdened with the guilt of a conscious decision, but a driverless car would have to process how to optimize the situation. The question that automakers have to ask themselves is, should self-driving cars be programmed to determine who gets to live and who dies? We just need to think this out. Think it, we need to act! So what do you think? Will robomobiles do to Uber what Uber is doing to taxis? Yes, that's a definite yes. Or will this whole driverless carriage notion run out of steam? Oh, maybe we could call them automobiles Or roadbots? For more autopiloted top 10s and self-aware top 5s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I don't know about you, but I am not going to trust no robot behind the wheel. I have seen the way robots drive.